can you tea? What can fans expect from this first episode? Not a lot of maps. <laughs> <laughs> And how quickly does the show start again after the finale? Is there a break? Um, so we we start right up pretty quickly, yeah. um, and then we have a little bit of a, a two week jump yeah. within the first episode. So it's not a long it's not a long break. No. And what what are the underlying themes of this? Um, uh, love and aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's early. Um, so this season, I think that the you know we're, we're carrying through the, the sort of theme of otherness and what it means to feel other in your own home, um, and we're also just digging into sort of the the uh, the idea of that on a sort of like a more universal level in that we're also dealing with it in 1947. We have a lot more, last season I think our um, our mythology landed in 2008. Uh, this season our mythology lands in 1947. So it's, it's cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask about how much we would have flashbacks. I know there's been some past news. Yeah. We're kind of telling a story within a story this year. So we have like a little thing over five or six episodes that's going to unfold uh, that'll hopefully hopefully dovetail <laughs> into our finale this year. Yeah, um, we uh, we have a, a really awesome cast of our 1947 characters, um, who some of some of whom are people that like Chris and I are like really geeking out over. Yeah. Um, which is such cool. as no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you'll you'll find out in about an hour and a half. Um, but. Uh, People that we've we're really like honored to work with, that we're really excited to work with, we're big fans of. So we're trying to write to uh, 1947 and, and really tell stories about what post-war America felt like, and especially post-war, you know, uh, the Southwest and what it felt like to be a cowboy and a soldier in 1947. I mean, the fans are all asking about Max. What can you tease about Max? He's dead. He's Honestly, I keep... I don't know why Nathan's here. Right, exactly. It's really awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know yet, so don't say anything. No, we keep telling him he just won't listen. Yeah. What about... Does he come in... Is there any chance for him in 1947, then? Is it, is uh, no. Well, not 1947, but we will see... We, we will definitely see Max flashbacks. Yes. Um, throughout the season. Um, we'll see him in... We'll see him in high school. We'll also see him... Him at, uh, on his 21st birthday. So then how is this death going to affect all the other relationships that all the other characters have with either each other or with themselves? Uh, what are, I mean, it's, it's a tragedy that's un unfolded. I mean, last year uh, we sort of had this tragedy that they kept quiet, and we sort of cleaned that away, right? So we start to get to ask the question, now what do they get to be now that the truth is sort of out there? So the, we find them at a crossroads moment, and now Max becomes part of that, that question mark for all of them. With this new piece of information, what do we? How do we move forward? Or not think, move forward with it? Yeah, even the characters that don't, they don't necessarily love Max, love Liz, yes. and so uh, they rally around her in her uh, quest to, um, to to resurrect him, basically. <laughs> One of the things I liked about the show is that you know you guys have taken it in its own direction, made its own show, but you paid homage to the original. I'm just curious, like, how do you decide what elements from the original you want to bring forward and as opposed to what you want to take off of all new I think stuff that's cool we're always interested in. Yeah. Essentially is that like it, it tests if we get excited in the room. Um, if everyone's like, yeah, let's let's try a version of that, then we do it. If it falls on his face, we don't do that one. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm I loved the show. It was on when I was twelve. Right. It was literally it was literally a child, guys. I'm so young. <laughs> um, <laughs> but so I'm I watched a little bit in prepping for this, but not the whole thing. So I'm actually I'm, I'm not that familiar with it at this point. Like, and and every once in a while, somebody will pitch something in the room and it'll ring a bell, and I'm like, I wonder if they did it on the original show. But um, we do we do a few intentional homages. I mean, obviously, we use the song, yeah, um, which is a very important thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but and the, the music on the show in general is an homage to the original. But um, we're really trying to do our own thing and, and separate ourselves. And just while Shiri Apple is correcting, yeah, quickly following that with the decision to, to use the episode titles as all 90s songs names, 
Yeah. Is yeah. that is that a throwback to the original show or just because you guys love nice music? Uh, both. Both. Okay. Yeah. I just I decreed it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like that. The second season is the same? Yeah. With yeah. Titles. Forever. Can you tease what the first episode is called? The first episode is called Stay, I Missed You from the Lisa Loeb song. <laughs> um, and I knew that when we wrote the finale last year. Yeah. And will the, will the other song come back this season? Um, the the Dido. Dido song? Uh, not yet, but yeah. uh, but like, listen, if we can do a version of the Dido song every year, I'd be okay. I know, it's like, you got a pitch? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I will say, uh, like a huge, I got an email from Fiona Apple the other day. It's a huge deal because Fiona Apple is like, is donating all proceeds from criminal right now to uh, legal defense funds for, for immigrants. Yes. And so we're really excited to use her song because we're excited to like contribute to that. But also like she literally reached out and it was so funny because she was like, here's my phone number in case you need like proof that it's me. And I was like, are you gonna sing yeah. to me? Like, if I call you, like, what? You should call her on the panel. <laughs> I heard the panel. Anyway, it was a huge honor. Like, that's when our not. I mean, our music budget is not huge, so when we use very well-known songs, it's generally because I have written an impassioned letter. Um, the lead singer of Third Eye Blind has been like really amazing to us, and, and we're very grateful. Can you tell us a little bit about the new relationship between Rosa and Brothers? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of the things like in sci-fi you're, you're trying to write about human you're trying to, <laughs> trying to take a human condition and make it a metaphor right but this is not something that that you can really compare to any really human thing like her sister was resurrected after 10 years she is now the older sister to her older sister um, there's a little bit of a power struggle there in that like Rosa still feels like you're my little sister I'm, I need to protect you and Liz is like I'm 28 and you're 19 um, Rosa is still an addict Rosa is still dealing with some complicated family okay, so issues. Um, I think in our metaphor of second chances, she's she's perfect for that. Just because you get one doesn't mean that you do it right. Right. Yeah. She gets a second chance, but she's still who she is. And it's a question of, you know, not only does she have a second chance, but somebody traded his life for hers. You know, she, she's she burdened it. Like, she's got a big burden. Is this worth it? Or was I the one that, that this should have happened to? How much romance can we expect? None. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I hate love. <laughs> uh -oh. um, there's a rom there's a lot of romance um, for Michael. Yeah. A lot of complicated romance for Michael. Um, Liz and Max, obviously, the, the romance between Liz and Max is where the heart is of the show. Um, right now, it's a very tragic romance, but it's there. Thank you, guys. Thank you.